Hello everyone, CSWord here, and above me is an efficient TNT blast chamber that is also very simple. You get 40 or 80 blocks per explosion and that is not using duped TNT. The rates are about 18,000 items per hour, which is double hopper speed or 10 chalker boxes per hour. It is a very simple design. We have a bot currently feeding blocks in with a stream, which then, once it gets to the end here, the torch powers this note block, or the note block updates from having a different block underneath for the observer to send a signal for these pistons to push them over. And once we get to the end over here, what we see is a pulse gets sent up to the ring of pistons up here, and also activates this dispenser, which is pointing down. And because there's no block underneath this immediate block, the piston, or the TNT will fall right through onto this waterlogged fence post. This is simply to prevent any I as few items from landing on here as possible, which is a major plus if you're trying to not lose items from explosions. Now, as you see here, there are items that got stuck because there's a gap, but because we're currently firing every time, the they should have been moved over, but I think I'm having a little bit of issues right now with uh, fabric. So, let's go ahead and change Steve over to a much harder material. Uh, so... Copper is, is rather high with explosion resistance, so if we switch over to concrete, which is what most people would use this for, that has a much lower level of 1.8 as opposed to 6. So now, let's go ahead and also change the top section here to demonstrate that instead of firing a TNT every time we extend these pistons, with lower blast resistant blocks such as concrete, we can actually change over to every other time. That's by using the T flip-flop with the observer and sticky piston here to move this redstone block back and forth. So now we should be ready to go. Let's set him to use in use again. And once he gets to the end here, we'll see that because it's currently in this position, the first one time these pistons extend, we get TNT. However, when we get to the second time, nothing will happen. But then when we get to the third and fifth and so on, every odd number in this case, that's when we will get TNT, which is a nice way to save on TNT. Now you might be wondering, why am I not using TNT every time when I'm pushing down the pistons or when I'm pushing the box? Because they have a lower blast resistance when they're moving. That's because I don't want any timings to be out of sync when playing on a server. There is that small chance that something could mess up and then your TNT blast chamber jams or it blows itself up. The idea of this one was to be a very simple to use and pretty much unbreakable design at the cost of some efficiency. So getting 80 blocks for each of these explosions, that's pretty okay for me. All right, so I also have carpet installed and we have a hopper counter down here. So let's go ahead and clear the counter as it stands now and run a quick tick warp and also run the counter again 17,000, 17,000, 16,000, 18,000 because they just went in so it really depends on when I'm sampling but after a long enough period of time we actually do end up with we do end up with around 18,000 for the average now the top section here, I chose to have a ring of 7x7 and 5x5 pistons. Cubic Meter had showed this in his Blast Chamber video, and I tried experimenting with other shapes and trying to even put additional pistons in right here, but that was causing issues, and if I had a 9x9 of ring of pistons, the I'd have to fire the TNT every time, and even with concrete, with as low as bla of a blast resistance as it has, I was running into issues where not every block was being blown up properly and then ones were being stuck and then they were being blown up with the next explosion. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Yes, this is not the most perfect design, but it but the sacrifices that it makes is made up for in its simplicity, being all all being able to fit into one chunk and extremely easy to build. I have not seen it fail, except for the time that I let all the TNT run out from the tick warp. Then it failed because everything got built up, and you know what the fix was? Come down here, break a few blocks, come up here, place a block so all these pistons extend, and hit the note block. 
Now everything is ready to run again. So, how exactly does this work on the Bedrock Edition? Okay, there are a few reasons why this cannot work in the Bedrock Edition. The first is the main parity issue where TNT does not drop 100% of the blocks that it blows up. And until this gets fixed, it doesn't matter what blast chamber you make, if you're not going to get 100% of your blocks back, it will matter. I got 18, 19, out of this large size hole. That parity thing needs to be fixed. The other thing is when it comes to dispensers, we have another issue where TNT is summoned in incorrect spots. Currently, if there's no block under it or in front of it, the dispenser will dis summon the TNT where that spot, where that empty space is, as we see right there. However, if there's any block underneath of it, the dispenser likes to summon the TNT at the same level as the dispenser itself. And if you put blocks on all four sides, what it likes to do is summon the TNT inside of those blocks. Most notably inside the dispenser itself. Let's see if we can get one where, there we go, where it pops out off to the side. So if I remove any of these blocks, what we'll see, it doesn't even care. But most of the time it'll choose the side that's completely empty. So that's a weird issue that needs to be fixed as well. And because of that, it doesn't matter what blast chamber I decide to build. If the dispenser doesn't dispense correctly, TNT doesn't drop the right number of blocks, you can't make a proper blast chamber in Bedrock Edition, which is just sad. So, with that note, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.